Welcome to lesson two about optics. We are dealing with lenses again. The last time we met, we looked at the lens equation and the equation for linear magnification and the sign conventions. Today we are going to discuss the lens maker's equation or lens maker's formula. But before we go to that, we have a question that will lead us into what we want to learn today. The question says that set the factors upon which the focal length of the lens depends. So we know several types of lenses. There are lenses like the one I am putting on, the eye lens. We have also different others used for different purposes. But each of them, or they have varying focal length depending on what they are designed to do. It is very important for us to know that the radar of curvature or radius of curvature, if it has one for that matter, affects the focal length and also the refractive index of the material through which the lens is made. Long time ago, lenses used to be made in entirely glass materials. But apparently, because glass is very brittle and very delicate, Anytime your glass, your eye lens will fall, or glasses will fall, it breaks. So apparently the glasses may be made in a plastic-like material, which is a little bit durable. So different materials call for different indexes, indices of refraction. Therefore, we must put those two factors into consideration. More explanation comes when we see in this equation the lens maker's equation, which is written as one over focal length equals to N lens, refractive index of the lens, divided by refractive index of the surrounding medium, minus one bracket, one over radius one minus one over radius two. So we know that a lens, for example, a biconvex lens has two ends, has two sides, side one and side two. These two may be carved in different ways. So the radar of curvature may be different, or we can have a lens like this, which we can call a plano concave lens. It has a flat side, and then it has side two, which is curved. So the radius of curvature here is can be known, but the radius of curvature of a flat surface is obviously infinite. We can also look at this same formula when the lens now is not surrounded by any medium. Here, we have seen NS, refractive index of the medium that is surrounding the lens. Maybe water, maybe any other kind of a liquid. But in this case, when the medium is air now, the refractive index of air, any air is one. So where we have NS as a surrounding medium becomes one, the equation can be simplified to become one over f equals n lens minus one bracket one over r1 minus one over r2 so this also in this equation sign conventions apply so let's dive in into explanations of sign conventions so sign conventions to understand this very well we have to choose the side of the lens where the ray is coming from and then we choose also the side of the lens where the eye is going to be in our diagram we see that the ray is coming from the left to the right sign conventions say that when the ray of light meet a convex surface the radius of curvature of that surface is positive when the ray of light meets a concave surface the radius of curvature of that surface is negative. I repeat, when the ray of light meets a convex surface, like you can see in the first diagram, that radius of curvature of that surface is positive. You can see it here. If the ray of light meets the surface which is concave, then that radius of curvature of that is negative, as you see it here. More examples, the ray of light here comes and as it goes through this, it meets this surface when it is concave in nature. 
So in unsigned convention, that is negative. Back here, this ray of light comes and meets, continues here when, by the time it reaches this surface here, it meets it when it is convex. So that radius of curvature is positive. That's what we do with sign convention. Here I put a summary that the above diagram shows that when the ray meets a convex surface, then the radius of curvature of that surface is positive. So for convex surface, positive radius of curvature. If the ray of light meets a concave surface, the radius of curvature of that surface is negative. Concave, negative, convex surface, positive. Let's do our first example. The example says that a biconvex lens has index of refraction 1.5 and then the radial of curvature of 10.0 centimeter and also 15.0 centimeter. We want to find the focal length when it is surrounded by air and again when surrounded with water of refractive index 1.3. These are two parts that we can deal with separately. First of all, we have this lens. So it is a biconvex lens. Bi meaning two, so it has two surfaces which are convex and they don't have the same radius of curvature. So let's say that the ray is coming from this end and then we want to observe, this is the eye, we want to observe the beam from this side. If this side, this has, a, it is a biconvex lens, so we can call this side one and this side two. When the ray comes and meets end one, it's going to meet it when it is convex. So which means that R1 is positive. The ray continues inside, it meets this other when it is concave. So that means that R2 is negative. So we can now have a choice. R1, according to the figures given, is positive 10 centimeters. R2, the figures given, is negative 15 centimeters. So let's now do our equation from the lens maker's equation, we are going to assume that this lens is surrounded by air, so we shall not deal with the refractive index of the surrounding medium. So this is one over F equals to N minus one, bracket one over R1 minus one over R2. This implies that one over F is going to be N, which is 1.5 minus one, bracket one over 10, minus R2 is negative, so that becomes a negative 15. So F finally, to save time, is going to be, you can see that 1.5 minus zero is 0 0.5. So that's going to be 0 0.5 multiplied by the bracket 10 power negative one. This becomes a plus, minus and a minus it becomes a plus, so it will be a plus 15 power negative one. So we know that this is on the left side, it is the reciprocal of F one over F, so we shall get the inverse of the final answer. And then this gives us 12 centimeters positive. So when we arrange our lens like this, the final answer becomes positive 12 centimeters. So meaning that this lens is a converging lens or it is totally converging because the focal length is positive. If you remember from the previous lesson that when the focal length is positive, that is a converging lens. Let's see the second part. Now the lens is surrounded by water and water has refractive index of 1.3. Let's dive in. We still have our formula. Now this case refractive index of water is 1.3. The formula is one over F equals to N lens over N water minus one, one over R1 minus one over R2. The equation that we use when the lens is surrounded by a medium whose refractive index is not one, like air. So we can feed in the information and say one over F, feel free to call this F2 or you can call it F prime, because it's now going to be different, but we can prove that in our calculation. Refractive index of the lens is 1.5 divided by 1.3 minus one, multiplied by 
R1, we got it as 10 minus one over, this was negative 15. That doesn't change anything. So maybe we can have a small diagram here of the length that we are dealing with. It is still a biconvex length. This is side one, side two. And um, let's, let's see. Good. Side one, side two, the ray is coming from this side. The ray is coming from this side. So we have the eye here. The ray is going to meet R1 when it is convex in nature. As it goes inside, it meets this end when it is concave. So R1 is still positive and R2 is negative. That's why this formula here is going to, to remain positive. Then we feed in using our calculator. We can save time. Final F prime is going to be 1.5 divided by 1.3 minus one. We get that multiplied by 10 power negative one minus plus now 15 power negative one close brackets. Then inverse of the final answer, you get 39 centimeters. This is positive. So positive implies it is a convex. What is very surprising and interesting for us to know is that initially we had the focal length as 12, but when we surrounded the lens with liquid or water of refractive index 1.5, 1.3, the focal length has changed to 39. So it takes us back to where we started from, factors affecting the focal length of a lens as refractive index. Of course, refractive index of a material in which the lens is made and also the refractive index of the surrounding medium. Also, the red eye of curvature or radius of curvature. 